Now that Moira is meta, it is finally my time to shine. As someone that was stuck in nail jail for eternity in Overwatch 1, I have, well, probably way too many hours on Moira. Am I still dog sh Yes. But she is what I like to call my old reliable. She's a character that I can fall back to when nothing else is working out. When the enemy team decides to unleash all of their childhood trauma rage on me, transporting me out of Overwatch and into Dead by Daylight where I have to spend every waking second fighting for my life. When I play Moira, it's usually because I've run out of options. But not in Season 9. Moira is actually a pretty good pick in season 9. She got a slight buff in the patch notes, benefits from the bigger hitbox size, and is probably the only support with enough raw healing to keep up with the new DPS passive, while also being able to prevent the enemy team from getting the new passive healing with her damage orbs and suck. Surprisingly, I get a decent amount of Moira VOD reviews on stream, so I'm gonna give you a detailed video about the things I see Moira players doing that they could improve on, so that you can climb from diamond to bronze. Now I'm going to cover every part of Moira's kit. She has a damage orb, a heal orb, healing on her left hand, damage on her right, and an instant fade ability that she's invulnerable during. Why did I tell you all the abilities? Because I've come to realize Overwatch players don't know what hero they're playing half the time. It's me. I'm Overwatch players. I have no idea what's going on ever, to be completely honest. Okay, first things first. Moira's most important resource is her piss. You can't pee on your teammates if you didn't drink enough water. So at all times, when you are not healing, you should be holding down your damage. If you don't know this, your teammates probably hate you, but your DPS refills your healing. So it's helpful to just keep this held when you aren't doing anything else. You never know when some random ass Genji player is going to be flipping around your head and you get a little drive-by suck that helps refill your healing resource. So in general, even if you think no one is around, you should be keeping this down to maximize your resources. This sort of goes along with my next point and you'll see why in a second. When healing, you should be tapping your heals when you can. Moira has a heal over time, which means it takes a second for the ally to get the full heal. So most of the time, you can tap your heal, allow it to heal your ally over time, and go back to sucking. However, there are certain instances where you will need to hold down the heal. It does heal faster if you hold it down. But the only time I do this is when someone is extremely critical and in imminent danger, as in they're still taking damage or going to continue taking damage while critical. Moira does do a ton of raw healing, so if you have someone that's critical and is still being focused by the enemy team, you can hold down the heals and possibly save their life due to the sheer amount of healing and how quickly it comes out. The new DPS passive messes with this a bit, obviously, as it reduces the amount of healing that a player can take, but your tank is not always a lost cause when it comes to healing. This also makes your orbs important. You should always have an orb out. As soon as that bitch comes off cooldown, you should be throwing it. Obviously, you can use orb to boost healing or to try and pick off someone who's low, but it can also be used to pressure enemies that are controlling areas. You know, like when that annoying hit scan is playing an off angle and absolutely beaming your team because he's uncontested. Throw that orb in a safe space and ruin his life. And when throwing your orbs, you should be doing complex geometry in your head to maximize its uptime. Or if you're me, I see funny wall, I throw it at funny wall. But seriously, throw your orbs in a way that will keep it in play and use it to the fullest potential. So usually, you'll want to throw it in areas where it can either bounce around or will follow your team or the enemy team's pathing. Especially when you find yourself in a 1v1 though, you'll want to make sure you get the maximum usage out of your orb to stay alive. Oh yeah, and please use your heal orb when you're in a 1v1. The damage orb can be super unreliable in a 1v1, you don't know that you'll be able to finish the target, but you do know you can probably stay alive if you throw a heal orb in a way that allows you to follow it, giving you more time to kill your target before they kill you. Obviously, there's exceptions to this rule, but there are so many times I see a Moira throw a damage orb instead of a heal, and they just die instead of making their enemy wish they never queued up. And then everybody on the enemy team laughs at that Moira. You don't want to be the Moira that gets laughed at. I know it can be hard to choose which orb to throw, and truthfully, I don't lean one way or another. I simply operate off vibes. Choosing which orb can depend on a number of factors like how much damage your team is taking, if you need healing, how low enemies are, etc. Typically, if my team is healthy or I feel I can heal them up without using all of my resources, I'll throw a damage orb. If not, then I'll do healing. And while we're on the topic of orbs, almost every single time you use Coalesce, 
essence, you should be throwing an orb out beforehand. Orb has an extremely short cooldown, meaning you can almost always throw an orb before using your coal. Think of it as a boost to your ultimate. A damage orb could help you finish off an enemy or create pressure that forces the enemy team to back off a bit. Or a healing orb could heal up your team while you focus your coal on DPS. 99.9% .9 of the time, you should be able to wait for the cooldown and throw an orb before your coal. Yeah, as soon as we have coal, we can get your coal. Okay. Uh, Tracer, use pulse. I'm off. I'm off. I'm off. I'm off. There are very rare instances where you need to use it to save an ally and won't have time to orb first. In which case, f that guy. So, how do you use coalescence? I have no clue. Aaron Keller usually comes down from the heavens and tells me when to use it. Realistically, it's about feeling out the fight. If your team is low and it's looking like the enemy team can win the fight, but you guys are not down too many characters or down an important character like your tank, you can use it to flip the fight in your favor. Cole is an ultimate that will not always 100% win or lose a fight, so it's okay if you accidentally waste one and it builds relatively quickly. It can also be used aggressively if you see the enemy team has someone or multiple people that are very low, but your team can't reach them to finish them off. When using coal, you also need to pay attention to what can counter it. For example, Rhine Shatter, Arvista Javelin, or Sigma Rock. You should be tracking these things before using your coalescence so you can bait them out before using it. Alternatively, you can save your fade for these things now that she can fade during coal. I use this trick to bait out Rhine Shatter sometimes because I can usually keep the team up with coal after he shatters. The only thing about doing that is, it's it's a little risky and you have to be very positive that you're gonna miss the shatter. In general, Fade is your best ability. It is your only get out of jail free card. Typically, you want to use Fade to disengage rather than engage. Obviously, nothing is always 100% true, but saving your Fade for when you're in danger keeps you from being caught out when you get focused by the enemy team. Even if you want to backline Moira, which I fully support, by the way. Try to sneak into the back line without using Fade so you can use it to get out. Don't get me wrong, Fade can certainly be used aggressively. If you see a Genji who's so low you can tickle his asshole to kill him, go on ahead and get in there. Just make sure he doesn't have any friends waiting and ready to kill you. Otherwise, your teammates will groan and type, GG's report our DPS Moira because you made one mistake that's going to haunt you for the rest of the game when no one will drop it even if you're winning. And if you want to give your Fade a little extra oomph, practice your fade jumps. Did you know there's a Moira parkour? It helps you learn how to use your fade jumps to get onto higher ground. Remember when I talked about orbs being a little buff to your ultimate? Well, this is a little buff to your fade. If you can fade onto high ground, it adds an extra layer of protection when you're trying to fade away for your safety. Overwatch players don't look up so it's unlikely they'll see you jump onto a ledge, and even if they do, it's an extra barrier they have to go through to focus you. You can also use this move to contest an uncontested DPS player that's utilizing the high ground to harass your team. They will shit their pants when they see you. All right, I've imparted all of my knowledge, which was not very much, on how to play Moira. You have all the tools you need to succeed. Now go into your ranked games, ignore all of it, and win because you're playing Moira. Oh, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because I just adopted a cat and we need to buy cat toys. Bye.